put just like a base stud where the wall is going to go. I'm very limited to space, obviously, uh, with here. I've got an old junky battery I've been sort of testing. This size here should fit a Group 31 battery. Hopefully that's the size I'm going with. And the reason why I don't want to push it further into the trailer, uh, two reasons. One is because I want most of the room, you know, for the cabin space. Uh, but also, um, I can't push it too far in or else it'll be interfering with the vent hole. Uh, basically now what I'm going to do is just, because this is going to be like the service side, you know, it doesn't need to be pretty. Um, so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse the uh, aluminum angled chamfer corner pieces that the trailer came with. And then I'm just going to put some uh, quarter inch ply here and then whatever electrical and stuff I'm mounting, I will sort of adhere uh, probably another half inch ply, something that uh, let's say an inverter could screw into um, and like the fuse block and stuff. Um, but for now, I'm just going to finish this side up so I can start getting the strapping in. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep marching forward. It is one degree today, a little chilly. So last night I built this frame. I actually uh, ran out of two by threes and the store didn't have any. Instead I bought some two by twos. This quality of two by two is a lot better than the quality of the two by threes I had. So yeah, I built the frame and you can see I used, I actually pre-drilled some holes and I put a screw down on each corner and then I installed these little brackets to make it a little bit sturdier. And um, so I just test fitted it in here and uh, it looks pretty good. To support it to the floor, I'm basically just going to be uh, screwing it down through to the subfloor. But for the ceiling, um, you can see I have the beam here, and actually, like the wall uh, doesn't line up with the beam. So I installed these little metal brackets again, and those will be holding the stud, bracing the stud wall up at the top. So I just cleaned the floor, swept it out, because now, today, I got some flooring that I'll be installing. It is uh, some Easy Street SPS Rigid uh, Luxury Vinyl Planks. The reason why I went for this stuff is because it is 100% waterproof and easy to install. Um, and it was relatively inexpensive. You can see it's a nice gray color and it is uh, four mils thick. I'll be installing some foam subflooring uh, basically just to even out the imperfections in the subfloor, but also to make up the uh, The difference in this angle here, so I'm probably gonna do two layers here and then one layer around the For the entire base and see this happens on both sides And I'm basically I'm gonna lay my floor on top of it um, And hopefully that works out. Okay, that's the plan anyways So to finish the outside edge of the flooring um, I have this idea to use this, it's actually for tile, Schluter um, trim edge, just like aluminum anodized piece of metal. 
So measure it here with the trailer. I'm going to cut it with the hacksaw. So I got the, the floor trim here. And uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is just I'm going to cut out the little pieces where this uh, rail is in the way. And then that way I can secure the uh, floor trim to the subfloor. So there's the trimmed out pieces. Just cleaned it up with my uh, file. It turned out nice and clean. I think that fits nice. And then I'm just gonna use some screws with uh, maybe a washer or something. Sit there too on this side. It's gonna sit nice and flush like so. This is used for tile and stuff with grout, but I think this turned out pretty good. See a little insert I made there. And then there's about a quarter inch lip overhang that I can add a little trim, trim panel to that inside face. Foam insert and the floor, nice and flush against inside here. Uh, there's about like eighth of an inch little groove. So I'm gonna be installing the floor right, right flush to this outside edge. And then hopefully I can use the back wall as a, you know, my tolerance, my quarter inch tolerance to get it perfect. Yeah. So the uh, underlayment is all installed. It had this really nice overlap, three inch seam with adhesive overlap. Tuck tape to uh, finish the pieces that the little strips I had to cut here. And so that's all nice. And then this, I thought I was gonna need two layers um, to get the floor to uh, go over this rail nicely, but I think I will be able to get away with one. So you see how well this nice detail is coming together. So this is the uh, floor trim here. And then there's just a little groove. And this flooring, once it's installed, will tuck in nicely right into that groove. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. Just gotta uh, screw in the stud wall. Uh, right now it's just loose so that I could fit the foam underneath. I just ran it underneath the stud just to, you know, act as a sill gasket almost. Walls are all installed now permanently. I gave her the old, uh, that's not going anywhere, so it's good. And then up top, uh, I showed the brackets I had installed earlier. And there's three of those. Um, and so that's nice and in there tidy. Just doing some uh, test layout and planning 
measurements for the flooring. And then the instructions say that I need a quarter inch sort of spacer on the uh, perimeter. I know I won't have that here because this is flush, so I'll just make sure I have a quarter inch over there. Uh, but anyway, so for the sides, I just used uh, some sample pieces. I cut a bunch up with the miter saw, and uh, basically that would be my quarter inch spacer for my floor. relatively painless. I had a few pieces that were chipping. I have two pieces left and hopefully if I don't screw up they will be enough to fill in the gap there. If I mess up then I have to go buy a whole other case of uh, this flooring. Flooring's all in. Loving this edge detail. Nice and clean. Turned out really nice. Yeah. Got a floor now. That's the uh, flooring installed. <laughs>